And we're back from the Three Dudes of Horror. I'm Toots. Oh, Damien. Yeah, yeah Farm Boy. Yeah, the camera is on. All right. <laughs> and of course, today is Friday the 13th. So we are going to review. Yeah, exactly. We are going to review, as you can guess, Friday the 18th. Yeah, Saturday the 14th. Yeah. You can uh, guess from our decor and the date. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna review the original Friday the Thirteenth uh, from 1980, starring uh, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon, yeah, <laughs> and, and one of his first movies. It's not his first; it's one of his first. Yeah, Adrian King, mm -hmm. Bing Crosby's son. Yeah, I wasn't joking. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's not a joke. Harry Crosby was. It crazy. sounds like a joke. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we believe you. We believe you. Uh, I, actually, I, I don't believe you. No. Oh, the, the dude that ends up like nailed to the door. Oh. Okay. That's, oh, with the arrows. That's Harry Crosby. He's Bing Crosby's son. son. Oh, okay. oh, Academy right. Award-winning actor Bing Crosby. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. So. So this is one of the successful, or one of the most successful. Our franchises of all time, really, uh, along with you know Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, but uh, we're gonna focus on, like I said, the original uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Like I said, from 1980, it's very, it was very low budget. Uh, it did make a killing at the box office, haha. Uh, <laughs> hence, <intended>. Yeah, <laughs> and saw all the sequels. Yeah. Uh, and at some point, we will get through. Uh, all the sequels, if not the majority of them, but for right now we're just gonna focus on that. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about the remake. We'll talk about that some other time. Yeah. Uh, but first, uh, Worm Boy is actually gonna talk about the video game. Which one? Uh, the. What, <laughs> do I do I'm gonna do the the NES one? Well, uh, I guess starting off with the NES one. I mean, yeah. any of you have watched the movies or? Or as old as we are. <laughs> I to this day I never passed it, of course, but I know my brother did pass it mm -hmm. several times. But it's kind of like we were talking earlier. Like once you pass it, it's like that's it. Yeah, know? the mystique. Yeah, the mystique is gone. So once my brother passed yeah. it and he showed me how to do it, I was like, well, what's the point now? You already did it, you know. Yeah. But, but it, it's very scary from what I remember as a child. Yeah. Um, and the song still creeps me out to this day. Like it still gives me that. Mm -hmm. Those goosebumps, you know. Yeah, and and for, for the the young the young people out there, uh, NES is Nintendo Entertainment System. We haven't figured that out. Yeah, the youngins. Yeah, the youngins. Uh, yeah, it was all all eight bit. Of course, if you look at it today, it's gonna be it's gonna look very crude and yeah. you know, not as impressive. But I remember back then the atmosphere was just. It was such. Uh, it was a lot of tension, a lot of suspense because you didn't know. When Jason was gonna show up, yeah. And at the same time, when you were counselors, uh, you essentially played camp counselors, and you can kind of switch up between characters. And you had to basically try to save the children, uh, the actual campers from Jason. And yeah, just if if you know, you can go on YouTube. You can look up videos of it. Um, like I said, it's one of those. It's one of those games where if you didn't, if you didn't grow up playing it, you wouldn't really understand. You wouldn't understand. Yeah. yeah. But I, one thing I remember was like, man, it was so difficult. You remember? Yeah. Like, yeah. Jason would just show up at some point. I was point. like, you can't even do anything, and he touches you once, and you're dead. Yeah. At some Pretty point, much. you're gonna meet up with Jason either in the lake area, uh, just on the path as you're going from cabin to cabin, mm -hmm. or in one of the cabins themselves. Yeah. Uh, especially when you hear what's called the Jason alarm. Yeah. That's that's when you can tell. Yeah. That's when you can tell. Like, uh, the kids are in danger now. Uh, well, you know what I was gonna say. Yeah. My we never had that game when I was a kid for our Nintendo, but my only clear memory of that game was one night where a friend of ours that stayed over during the summer, and there was like six or seven of us, of uh, like crowded around the TV and we were all playing it because he brought it over. Yeah. And it was one of those things where like you guys were saying, 
Mm -hmm. Like it was impossible. Like if Jason just touches you once, like you're dead. Yeah. So yeah. it was one of those things where we were just passing the controller back and forth, and everybody was playing, taking turns playing it. Yeah. And nobody could beat it, and we never <laughs> figured out how to beat it. Yeah. So. Yeah, back in those days, I mean, you didn't really have the guides you have now on YouTube, like how to do it. Yeah, there's no. It was yeah. very difficult. I mean, yeah. I remember just like ah, oh, like I'm gonna play something else because this game's pissing me off. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't know a lot of people that beat it, especially when it first came out. Uh, and of course, at that time, it was the 80s, so there was no internet. Uh, mm -hmm. It was we just have, we didn't have Google, we didn't have YouTube. <clears throat> yeah, we, we had Game Genie. Yeah, you had you had <laughs> Game Genie. I remember that. <laughs> um, Sometimes in the magazines. Yeah, yeah you had like on. Nintendo Power, Game Pro, Electronic Gaming Monthly, or EGM. Yeah, um, or sometimes just going to the arcades and meeting someone there. And just asking about the the game that yeah. you played it, it was like, oh, have you passed it, or how, how do you do this? Like that's how I would learn. Yeah, or the or the the only other option is just messing with it until you figure it out on your own. That's yeah. pretty much the only <laughs> other way to do it. Trial and error. Yeah, trial yeah. and error. And it just I'm gonna just touch a little bit on the new one, the new version. Yeah. I saw it on Xbox on PS4. Mm -hmm. I I think it's good. It's just kind of very repetitive, but you know. It, it's 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 all right, I guess. But I would rather play the original, the I, NES. Yeah, I've I've personally haven't played. It. I've seen you play it. Yeah. And and I remember there's there is a lot of suspense. There is a lot of tension, especially when you're playing with a group of of uh, online Counselors. gamers. Yeah. Uh, because you don't know who's gonna be Jason. And then, and then there's like different varieties of Jason. Yeah, and then I mean. You, you can actually escape him, but not like in the movies, you can't really escape him. <laughs> well, well, I remember I remember the first time you played, or one of the first, well, when I saw you play it, yeah. the first time where you picked up the shotgun, or you picked up the rifle, yeah. and you were like, can I hurt somebody else? Boom, and you shot like one of, <laughs> yeah. one of the regular players. <laughs> yeah, that was and, funny. And they in turn killed you. Yeah. And they were like, wow, you only lasted a few seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I could have used that shot to kill Jason, but no, I was just too curious, like, can I kill all the yeah. monsters? Well, no, it turns out you can. Yeah, is friendly fire on? Oh, well, yeah. Well, I'm not much of a gamer, but the one time that I was watching you play it, it seemed pretty cool to me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so those those are our, our takes on, on, on the Friday the 13th, the video games. Yeah. Oh, and actually, before we go on to the, to the movie, um, mm -hmm. it did come out today, the disc version. I mean, it's been out on the consoles, mm -hmm. but digital version, but uh -huh. I think I, I want to actually get the, the actual physical disc. Does the disc, does the actual physical game have like an actual like campaign mm -hmm. on it, or is it all still just you play online? I think it's all online for now, mm -hmm. from what I know, but I've heard rumors that they want to do like a storyline kind of thing, which would be, yeah. I, I would... I would want to play the storyline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so going to the actual movie itself. Uh, so pretty much what it's about is there. It, there was a murder. There was two murders that happened back in 1958. Uh, of these camp counselors that were attempting to, you know, have sex, and years later, present day, or at least in the movies, which was 1980. Uh, there, somebody was one of the guys. I think uh, Steve Christie, I think that was his name, or something like that, was trying to reopen the camp, uh, trying to reopen Camp Crystal Lake, because just and then everybody, the townsfolk, thinks that it's cursed, and then there's uh, Ralph, the the loony guy that is kind of a soothsayer, which is kind of you know where where he's talking about. You know, everybody's doomed, you need to leave. He's the yeah. crazy guy in town. Yeah, he's the crazy guy in town that everyone's like, well, that's, he's up to his shit again. <laughs> but but he's, he's actually the soothsayer. He's actually, like, telling the truth. He's, you know, he's, he's pretty much predicting what's going to happen. Uh, and this pretty much started, this didn't, okay, to clarify, this didn't start the slasher. Uh, genre. genre that was actually Halloween, but this one actually kind of, it actually kind of kickstarted it. Yeah, like put it on the map. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I was going to say um, the writer of the original Friday the 13th, Victor Miller, mm -hmm. and the director of Sean S. Cunningham. Uh, well, the writer actually, the writer Victor Miller actually said that Sean S. Cunningham came to him with an idea of Halloween was so successful mm -hmm. and it was so low budget and it made like a mountain of money at the box office that he like almost verbatim his words to Victor Miller were, let's rip off Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, that's how this movie came because they were they were gonna follow the same equation, the same formula. Mm -hmm. Like they're gonna we're gonna write a situation where there's a group of you know horny teenagers. Yeah. And we're gonna put them in a situation where they are out of the reach of authority figures or parents or grown ups to help them. Like, and there's a killer on the loose that takes them out one by one. And that, and there's a, there's a prior evil in the area. Like there's a, there's a backstory to some evil that, that happened prior to the events in the movie. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be another huge success. And uh, Sean S. Cunningham said that when they made the movie, they never intended it to become the, the huge franchise and the label that it's become Man. nowadays. Yeah. They, they never intended it to be a sequel. They just wanted to make money. <laughs> well, after it made, after it made like a boatload of money at the box office, uh, Paramount said to them, like, you should do another one. Like, and that's basically where it, that's basically how. <laughs> and that's where, that's where it started crumbling. That, little that, by that's little. how it snowballed. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think at that point, I think at that point they just started, you know, just like, focus where, on where, where else can we take it? Cause he was a little kid. And I was like, let's just make him into an adult. And, okay, you know. But in the movie, they don't really explain though that, like, in between the the first two movies. Well, but you know, they actually didn't want to bring Jason back. That wasn't even the intention when they made the sequel. Mm -hmm. And I forgot if it was, I don't know if it was, I think it was Sean S. Cunningham's idea, and mm -hmm. Victor Miller, the writer, was the one that was kind of against it. And he said, like, wow, you know, I'm so happy that I was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Or it might be the other way around, I'm not sure. But, and then it ended up, you know, once Jason got his hockey mask and his machete or his axe or his signature weapon, mm -hmm. and he took off and became an icon, it was just like, yeah, that's, it just went from there. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, so this movie pretty much kick-started the whole, you know, like, the, the, like, it really emphasized the drunken, stoned, horny teenagers. Dumb. That, well, teenagers, yet they're, like, in their 30s, 20s or 30s. I know. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't, they can't really have teenagers. Oh, I know that. I know that. Imagine how, how sick that would be. Like, oh, yeah, okay. that would be sick. Let's yeah. get real teenagers. Like, yeah. No, no. Oh, no, well, no. maybe the 80s, they would have done that. Well, I mean, if there were camp counselors, I can I can imagine yeah. them being in their twenties anyway. Um, but you know uh, what you were talking about earlier, Toots? Mm -hmm. I really like that aspect of this movie. Like, it's not so. I like that like campfire tale aspect of the movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I like when uh, the character played by Robbie Morgan, the cook. Yeah. When she's when she's hitchhiking through the town, the small town at the beginning that's around Crystal Lake, mm -hmm. and like. The townsfolk in the cafe, the yeah, they're very the, superstitious. The truck yeah. driver, the truck driver that gives ends up giving her a lift, and then Crazy Ralph. I like that aspect of the movie where they all, it's it's like a it's like a like a myth, like a like a like a ghost story in the town kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's, it's a legend. That, it's a town legend. Yeah, it's a it's a myth, a legend in the mm -hmm. town, like. And I like that. I like the part. I like those parts where Crazy Ralph actually approaches them, and 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 there's that. There's that like. There's that tension, where he's trying to warn them. Yeah. And he's like, it's cursed, and you know, and then you know the, and then there's the whole there's the exposition scene, I guess, when she's getting a ride from the truck driver, and he's mm -hmm. telling her he's he kind of that's the scene right where he kind of breaks it down, and he's he's kind of talking yeah. about you know. And in these years, you know, they tried to reopen it this year. Yeah. And and it and there was a fire, 
and he kind of like breaks it down like he kind of gives you the whole story the whole backstory that every time that this camp tries to reopen there's some kind of tragedy some kind of disaster that you know prevents it from happening mm -hmm. yeah and, and so so it so it does kind of go into the whole uh you know the, the counselors are being killed one by one through by you know via horrific ways yeah i think that sorry i'm gonna no, no, no. I mean, interject real quick i think the way the some of the deaths were i mean call me sick but man they're ingenious some of them they are and i just couldn't help but laugh at some of them i was like you know i, I it's just really good you know for that for the movie to come out in the 80s and for them to be so ingenious in the way they killed them well but the, yeah. we have to we have yeah. to give credit where credit's due yeah the great tom, tom savini, savini. Yeah. yeah the great tom savini was the makeup effects artist yeah now now we'll, we'll get to the effects a, a little bit in in a little while uh because i guess because like we said it was tom savini yeah he's the master of makeup and you know makeup effects and things like that but there were some moments and we'll emphasize a little bit later that we where were like oh yeah we can tell this is low budget uh <laughs> kevin bacon scene so yeah we'll get we'll get to that in a bit uh so like i said the the counselors are killed one by one in horrific ways and it, do, it does go to the little signature uh scenes like you see in the later films where after you have that body count you see the bodies just kind of you see the main character like encounter them and in, in weird yet horrific ways where they're hanging from somewhere or they drop from somewhere or they crash through a window you know which is exactly like the original halloween yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they pretty much stole it <laughs> so yeah there's that there's that carnage scene with jamie lee curtis where she finds all the victims one by one. Yeah, and it's, and it's the same exact thing in this movie. Yeah, but but that's what but that's why I said that Halloween started it, but it was Friday the Thirteenth that actually, you know, that kind of ran like ran with the ball, you know, ran with it. Yeah. And 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 it turns out that that the real killer in part one, spoiler alert, uh, no. was was Mrs. Voorhees. Yeah, uh, who went a little crazy because her son died a years ago. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> no, it's a understandable. A little bit. Okay. Well, I mean, for anyone that actually, you know, there might went be some that. young people that have that actually yeah. haven't seen the movie. Yeah. The the reason the whole curse started at Camp Crystal Lake was because Jason was actually a kid at the at the camp back in the fifties, and his mom like worked as the cook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she worked. She she I think she. I think she worked in some capacity. Well, anyway, I mean, the whole thing is, you know, uh, Jason, you know, looked kind of funny. He was kind of like a ten-year-old elephant man. He was so, deformed. Yeah. yeah, he was deformed. So naturally, kids are evil. So all the other kids. <laughs> <laughs> so all the other kids are picking on him. All the other kids are picking on him, and they drown him in the lake. Well, well they didn't and, drown him. They just didn't help him. <laughs> He well, but I mean, they well, pretty much. Yeah. They put him in the lake, and he starts drowning. Yeah. And the the big the big thing is that the counselors, instead of supervising the kids, they were off having sex. Mm -hmm. So, Mrs. Voorhees attributes, you know, that to her son's death. Right. Yeah. Rightfully so. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason that if there's counselors at Camp Crystal Lake that are horny and having sex, Mrs. Voorhees ain't having that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason that she starts and starts killing them off one by one. Yeah, and, and, and I understand and I understand like her her point of view. So I was just like I was like, well, you know, they're counselors, they're probably gonna pull the same shit, so I might as well get rid of them. Um, well, no, but I mean I'm not defending it. Like clearly she's she's got like some psychosis now. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm not well I mean I'm not I'm not defending it her well, I mean, I'm just defending it in the movie. Well so the, the in terms whole, of the movie. Well so the whole so the whole <laughs> Yeah, you sick bastard. Yeah, you yeah, I'm a sick bastard. <laughs> so the whole spoiler of the movie is that all these disasters that the truck driver was telling the the new cook mm -hmm. were 
no, Mrs. Voorhees was behind all of those. Yeah. Because she she hates the place. She she hates kind of Crystal Lake with a passion. Yeah. So she wants she never wants it to be opened again. So she sabotages any attempts, mm -hmm. and that's how, that's the whole you know. Yeah, that's where breakdown of the movie. Yeah. So and then and then uh, Alice, who's essentially becomes the hero of the movie, um, you know, finally encounters Mrs. Voorhees. That's where it's revealed where uh, that, that she's the one responsible for all these deaths, and that's when she really kind of lets loose and kind of goes and really goes crazy. Uh, tries to kill Alice, and Alice is the one that manages to grab the machete from her and chop her head off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Another yeah. great effect by Tom Savini's mm -hmm. by Tom Savini's special effects team in 1980. Yeah, and then, and then, uh, and I, I believe at the very end it was other than the hospital scene, it was like a dream sequence, right, where she's on the boat or on the canoe, and yeah. she and she, it's you know she thinks she's safe, and you hear the music and it swells up and it's very serene and the entire environment is very serene well you know their inspiration for that right what what yeah. was it their inspiration all everybody that was involved tom savini who was special was the special effects mm -hmm. uh victor miller the writer sean S. cunningham the director their inspiration for that lake scene was the end the ending scene at carrie where the hand comes out of oh the okay. yeah really yeah oh, they were like yeah. let's duplicate that but let's take it even further in idea. our movie like We'll show her what, like how you said, like with the, with the, yeah, the very serene music in the background. Let's show her, you know, with her hand gliding in the water, and then the audience might be thinking, okay, something's gonna happen, and then it yeah. doesn't happen. Then you see the police show up in the distance. Yeah. So now you know she's safe, and just keep making the audience get more and more and more relaxed, and, and then boom, and then Jason yeah. just pops out of the water, <laughs> and. Uh, Scary there, Jimmy. <laughs> well, that, that's the point. Yeah. And Ari Riemann, who played Jason, other than am I saying his name right? Riemann. Ari, Ari Riemann. Riemann. I mean, Riemann. Yeah. I think that so. that makeup, <laughs> that makeup that they did on on Jason, like the boy that jumps out of the water, like mm -hmm. that looks scary. Yeah. Like that actually looks scary. Like yeah. that still. So looks scary. did a great job with with that makeup. Uh, he, he's one of the best in the biz. Yeah. yeah, so the, the infamous scene at the end of Carrie where the hand comes out from the ground by the gravestone, wow. like that was their inspiration I for that scene. Why? Man, they, they stole a lot of stuff. Well but the thing is hey, well, <laughs> But the thing is, you know, you can't really just say movie. you can't really say that it was just outright plagiarism because No, it's not, it's not they it's were not. they were inspired they by were that. Just inspired scene. By true event. They were they were inspired by. <laughs> <laughs> they were true. I don't know. I'm joking. <laughs> no, like they they were inspired by that particular scene from Carrie to do to do the lake scene, oh. but they took it to the next level, and yeah. they were inspired by yeah. Halloween's slasher idea of killing off all the teens one by one. Yeah. But the, it, with Tom Savini's yeah. makeup, you know, like the girl with the accent in her face. Yeah. And, yeah. and the girl that gets her throat slit, the first uh, Robbie Morgan's character. Like they took that to the next level, also. So it's yeah. kind of like they were just building upon the formula that was already there. So yeah, it made it a lot better. Yeah, I was, I was, of course, I was joking when I said they stole a lot of stuff. They, they were inspired by them. Yeah, you're right. They're that they were inspired and whatnot. But they just know, saw the, they saw a formula. Yeah, they saw yeah. a formula with Halloween that worked. Yeah, they just like, they just ran with it. And if you really took the ball and ran with it. And if you it. really think about it, some of the other slasher films are kind of the same formula too. Mm -hmm. right? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, what's the other one? Scream. Um, well, yeah, sc yeah, Scream is like. I mean, if you really think yeah. about it, I mean, they all had different characters, different things, but. I think it's the same formula. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they definitely like they, but this. This I think like Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth. Like this started from, all the tropes, yeah. all the cliches. But from the slasher films, Jason to me is one of the 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 best icons out there right now. Yeah, the, not just because it's Friday the Thirteenth, but yeah, I, I respect the first couple of movies. The scream, the scream, the especially the first one. Uh, that one, yeah, that one intentionally did the formula because it was 
playing off of that. It wasn't like it's like tongue in cheek. Yeah, it was very yeah, tongue in cheek, like, and and it wasn't it wasn't so much like oh let's just do our own slash movie that we're playing upon all the pre existing ones. <laughs> um, that's why that's why all that you know all those uh, cliches and, and all the tropes, all the yeah. tropes and everything. Like that's why they intentionally did it that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, and did you know, I, I saw an interview with uh, Ari Raymond that played the child Jason in this movie, in the original Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. and he said that he said that he heard that originally uh, Sean S. Cunningham, the director, was going to use his son, I think wow. his name is Noel Cunningham, mm -hmm. and that supposedly he heard that Mrs. Cunningham was did not approve of that. She was like, uh, no, <laughs> like... You're not gonna use my boy for this, so and then he's <laughs> but he said like that turned out to be a good thing for me because then I got the part. Yeah, so, yeah. But it was just funny because he said that he had done another movie with Victor Miller and Sean S. Cunningham right before Friday the Thirteenth, and he was like a child actor at the time. Mm. And they called him up and they said, "Hey, we got another part for you." <laughs> and all they said was, uh, "Can you swim?" And he's like, "Yeah," and they're like. You're in, dude. You got it. <laughs> They're like, that's the only prerequisite. <laughs> like, can you swim? Yeah, you're in. <laughs> All right. So, so that that's pretty much that's pretty much the movie. And and I did mention the effects. I did mention I did mention the effects. For the most part, were great. Uh, there were one or two that were a bit hokey. Yeah, um, but it's expected. Yeah, I mean, it, it was low budget. And the one and the one that comes to mind and and. Damon's gonna agree with me on this. Is the Kevin Bacon death, uh, where you see where you see the arrow or the spike or what have you come out from the throat, and you can just tell it's just all fake. It's it just looks like moving kind of different. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I remember. And well, because the way I think the way that Tom Savini shot that was Kevin Bacon was actually standing up, mm -hmm. and they. They had his head like coming through something that they had designed to look like he was laying on the bed, like on the pillow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his body is actually not there at all. He's actually standing straight up, and they just built that. Uh, <laughs> all due respect to Tom Savini. Yeah. They built that awful looking neck that like it doesn't match like the skin tone or mm -hmm. anything at all. Yeah. And you just see that arrow come through, and then <laughs> Kevin Bacon does the classic the. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I liked something that Sean S. Cunningham said about the special effects in this movie. He was saying uh, at that time in 1980, where absolutely no digital effects, no yeah. CGI existed, because he was saying nowadays, you know, no one's surprised or shocked by special effects in movies anymore. It's because, expected. Yeah, exactly, exactly, more and more. It's expected. If they see something amazing or, you know, miraculous as far as, like, the, the people just assume, you know, oh, that's a CGI effect, that's a... Yeah. They, he said that they wanted to do the special effects in this movie like a magic show. Like, that's the way that he put it. Like, when people see the movie, they want to say, like... How did they do that? Yeah. He wanted the audience to be like, wow, how did you do that? You know, because... Because, you know, clearly they're not really killing Kevin Bacon to, but it to looks make like a movie. They are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not really killing anybody. So, yeah. And they had to rely solely on the special effects genius of Tom Savini and his team. So. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. Like, the, the by far the worst one is the. But I mean, you know, it's. You know, you can cut him some slack. Yeah. yeah. Like, this was an extremely low budget movie way yeah, back yeah. in. Way back in 1980s. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna be like that's bullshit. Like I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you but, fucked up. Well, how? But like, yeah. But like we were saying, the where uh, the where the girl that the girl that's, <laughs> the girl that's with Kevin Bacon earlier mm -hmm. in the in the movie. Yeah. Her death scene, like with the axe to her face. That looked awesome. Like for 1980. That looked awesome. Yeah. For 1980 and like for nothing but practical effects at their disposal, that was pretty fucking good. Yeah. Like that looked good. Like I don't even I don't even know how they did it. Like Yeah. And 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 the funny thing is that nowadays if if you were to see an awesome special effect and and the director actually says, "Well, you know, no, that actually was practical." Like, like you're amazed. 
Yeah. Right. You know, because exactly. yeah, yeah. Because nowadays, yeah, CG is relied on too heavily. In most circumstances nowadays, I can understand why, because some of it is a bit impossible to do without CG. But, but still, use some creativeness, you know? Yeah, but if it's something where bugs are going to be crawling all over the actor or whatnot, back in back in those days, it was, it was all, I mean, they used real bugs, or they used at least something practical that it made it look real. And I think that's yeah. what they did in this movie because it was, mm -hmm. it was so practical, but it looked so real yeah. for the most yeah. part. And I think yeah. that mixed up with everything else, like the acting and, you know, the storyline, I think it, it mended pretty well. Yeah, and, and, one thing, and one thing I did notice, uh, you know, this, this time that we saw the movie, because we saw it right before we, we started recording this, and the last time I saw this movie, I think VHS was still in style. And one thing I noticed now... <laughs> that's the last time you saw this movie? I th yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, it's been a while. That, that's why I said I can only remember bits and pieces, like yeah, I, I, the, I, ending with, the ending with Missy Morgan. I'm Morgan's. right there with you, too, Toots. The last time I saw it was probably with my mom. On beta VHS. <laughs> yeah, well, no, not that far back. <laughs> but... but uh, but I remember like the scenes with with Mrs. Voorhees. I remember the Kevin Bacon death. Mm -hmm. You know the Ned, like the guy that goes into the cabin and like just disappears. You know, uh, but uh, but in this case, I almost lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, but in this case, once I saw it again, one thing that I appreciated was the camaraderie of the of the characters themselves. Like you, like yeah, you have the prankster, and you have you know like okay. they're a bit they're a bit horny and whatnot, and they smoke weed and whatnot. Uh, but I think they did have pretty good chemistry for a low budget movie, and it was an ensemble cast. I thought they did a pretty good job in terms of. I think they did a great job. Yeah, uh, in terms of cast, uh, in terms of the casting of the movie. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I need to mention is. Uh, I don't know the name of the the music supervisor. The the, the composer. You yeah. The, you said it earlier. There's a uh, Harry or Henry. Uh, actually, we could just look in on this thing. <laughs> Let's see. One second. Yeah. Okay. Harry <laughs> Manfredini. Harry Manfredini. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, oh. I, they made an interesting choice with the music in this movie that I wanted to touch on. There is no music in this movie other than when the killer is around. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really interesting. And the composer was actually talking about uh, different, different certain spots in the movie where it's like that's a great moment for, you know, some kind of jolting music or... Um, I think a good example that he was using was at the beginning where um, the, the guy in charge, the one that's trying to uh, reopen Camp Crystal Lake, where he's like fixing the gutter. Yeah, Mr. And, Christie. Yeah, and uh, Adrian King's character is there. Um, the main character. Oh, um, Alice? Alice. And he comes down from the ladder and they kind of have, like, a, they're talking. And then they kind of hint that, that there might have been some kind of, like, like, a romantic relationship in the past. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of, like softly touches her face or like her hair mm -hmm. and uh, the music composer was like that's another good example right there there would be a good moment for like some somber music or and he's like but we decided not to do it we only put in intense music when the killer's around mm -hmm. and i don't know i just i thought that was a really interesting choice yeah like yeah. i've never heard of that in another movie no. i'm sure it's happened but that's the first time I've actually ever heard a composer say that, and a director and a writer all decide to do that in a movie. Like, so you know when the killer's around because you hear music, and I I love the POV shots from the killer. Yeah. Like before you know that it's Mrs. Voorhees, like where the the guy takes off, the 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 boss I guess, mm -hmm. and they're none of them are doing what they're supposed to be doing, and they're all like playing down at the lake. Yeah. And you just see, like, the POV from the killer, like, from behind the trees, kind of, like, watching them and stalking them. And you hear the music. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I just to me that's a good shot. Like that's that's a that was just a wise decision by all the filmmakers. Yeah. All right. So. Do y'all have a favorite scene or? Hmm. I would have to say. I would have to say that pretty much the climax of the movie when when Alice is confronting or attempting to fight back to from you know uh, to fight Mrs. Voorhees. And played then she, played and then, by the great Betsy Palmer. Yeah, and then and then she met and then Alice manages to get the machete and in slow motion just chops her head off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and that one to talk about the, that, that, where, that, the, where the hands come up like, mm -hmm. after yeah. she's decapitated. And I always thought it was Tom Savini's hands. Yeah. But it's actually his assistant's hands. Mm -hmm. Like that's still that's kind of creepy. Like I mean, you know, it's like cheesy Friday the Thirteenth, whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah. because I don't, well, I know like you might have it where you know the where someone's just been decomposed or decomposed. Sorry, decapitated. De decapitated. 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 And the body is still like reacting. And, mm -hmm. and it's it's almost like the hands are coming up like, where's my head? <laughs> like, yeah. That's kind of like, I don't know if there's any like scientific validity to that, but... But it's part of the... No, but it's, usually, cre it's creepy though, it's like... Yeah, no, yeah usually if it, someone's decapitated right then and there, that... That's it. Yeah, that kind of... Yeah, that, that, all that... I don't even think stopped. the blood actually even squirts um, either. There's a no, bit it, room, no, right? it, it's it worth not, it. Not a lot, but there's some. some. Yeah, because the heart's still beating, so as long as it's... No, but you meant in the movie, for, right? Yeah. yeah, I meant in the movie. I think there's a little blood squirt. Yeah, there is, there is a little Probably blood Probably not as much as out. would actually be squirting with all those major arteries severed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, but I mean, once that once that head comes off, all those connections are lost. So, you know, yeah, the heart will pump for maybe a couple more times and then stop. Now we're getting too um, technical here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Friday the 13th. Yeah, and then the head will probably be conscious for a few seconds and then, and yeah. then die. Um, but I actually think, like, my favorite scenes in the movie are... Th that, oh, and, and that, that one and the, uh, the whole surprise at the end with, with little Jason coming out and... That's, that was good. Yeah, that's another that's another favorite scene. But I honestly think that my favorite scenes, mm -hmm. or maybe scene in particular in the movie, is what the one I mentioned earlier, where uh, Robbie Morgan's character, the cook, is mm -hmm. getting a lift from the truck driver, and yeah. he's like, that's like the big exposition scene. Yeah. Where he's laying out like the whole backstory and all the legends and all the. You know all the different disasters that have happened at Camp Crystal Lake every single time they try to reopen it. Yeah. And he's trying to warn her. You know, he's like, "You'd be wise to quit right now." And to me, that's like the the whole like local legend, campfire tale stuff. That's what that's what's cool to me. Like that's what's interesting to me. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. I'm cur uh, well. Go ahead. Well, you pretty much took the the scenes. From okay. Me. <laughs> Sorry. But no, yeah. I, I, I like almost all the scenes, but one of the favorite ones was the one you said yeah. that, um, what, I mean... With Little Jason coming out, or, or the... I would or, say or Little or Jason, because that was a little bit more like, I, I didn't really expect it, you know? Mm -hmm. It was more like, the first time I saw it, it was like, it, it happened, and I was like, oh, I was like, oh shit. Like, like now... So it was pretty cool. Now I'm wondering, uh, like, like the, the truck, the truck driver, the one that was giving, uh, Right. Uh, yeah, giving the girl a ride to the camp, and I wonder, like, because at, at some point there has to be an aftermath. Like, Alice is in the hospital at the very end. She finds out, oh shit, everybody's dead, and th so there has to be an aftermath, a, a denouement after that. And and I'm thinking, I'm just imagining the truck driver just watching TV or something like at the bar. And then they like they list all the people that died at Camp Crystal Lake, and one of them happens to be the girl. And I wonder if his reaction would be, "Oh my God, that's terrible," or, "I told her she would, didn't listen." Drink, <laughs> you know. 
So I'm, I'm curious what his reaction would be. I'm, I'm think I'm leaning more towards. <laughs> I tried to warn her and didn't listen. I'm like, are, are we talking alternate ending here? Those damn kids. It's just, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, like after yeah. the credits roll and everything. Like, what happens afterwards? Those damn kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw I saw an interview with Robbie Morgan mm -hmm. with the with the actress that plays the cook, mm -hmm. and I thought it was cool that she was saying that she is the first one to die mm -hmm. in Friday the 13th part one yeah so she's like really proud of that and she said that when she meets people and she she like tells them that that some people just think that out of the entire franchise yeah but some people are just like in are just in awe and just in total like admiration like that is so cool dude like you are so awesome like, yeah. You're the first death in the first movie of this huge franchise. I thought that, that's like one of those deep things. Yeah. Like, like that's such a, like <laughs> that's yeah, that's like that's such a bar on your shoulder, mm -hmm. or like such a medal on your chest, you know? Yeah. Like, I was the first one killed in the first Friday the Thirteenth movie. Like, yeah, but, but all in all, uh, actually, come to think of it. <laughs> What about the two, what about the two counselors from 1958? That well, see, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but when you think about it, it's like she's the first, you know, teen like, counselor, like camp counselor, like I guess I guess from the present day. Right. Yeah. You know, starting on after that. Right. Okay. Uh, so all in all, uh, what what do you guys give the movie? Hundred um, out of a hundred. Yeah. I actually really like watching this movie. Like I acknowledge that it's you know, you know, no pun intended. It's campy, and, but I I like watching this movie. I would give it like a B plus to an A minus. Like, I, it's it's really enjoyable for me. Like I I don't. Yeah, and I would give it a B, uh, solid B. Yeah, solid B. Yeah, I would give it a B I would give it like an A minus. B plus to an A minus because, yeah, it was low budget and, and, and like one or two of the effects didn't come off as well, you know, but everything else, the, the tension, the music, the camaraderie, the fact that it took the ball that John Carpenter started with, with Halloween, you know, and, and carried to a certain extent, uh, I, don't know, I forgot who directed that one, Brian De Palma. Um, and they took the ball and they really just ran with it. And because they ran, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and because they ran with it, you know, this whole franchise was born, you know. So now you have all these sequels and spin offs. Yeah. And, and Jason, you know, X like, is. Yeah. Like now Jason Voorhees and, is like a brand on yeah. all his own. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's yeah. made it. He's made it. He doesn't really make any more movies. Uh, please, please don't make more movies. <laughs> yeah. Just as long as long as it's not like Jason X. That's all. That's all we. Hey, have. that's a great movie for me to poop on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that one good kill. Yeah, and and uh, the mask is awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then it has the, you know, you have these video games now and and back then, and and TV series and all this. So yeah. it really just started this entire big. Snowball. It's a label, like it's, yeah, the yeah, it's, it's, label. Yeah, it's a label, and it's like part of the American like idiom, the American <laughs> culture? like pop mm -hmm. culture now. Like, yeah, everybody knows Jason. Everybody knows Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, because yeah. because before the before the movie, I'm sure whenever it was Friday the Thirteenth, nobody it was, was like, just oh, whatever. Yeah, it was just like oh bad luck, or you know uh, what do you call it. Uh, Triska Deca phobia, you know, that, you know, for that, no, for real, that's what it is. Triska Deca phobia, yeah. I just learned that word right now. I don't even know what that is, but I'll look it up right now. Well, we'll go with, we'll I may be mispronouncing it. Our next well, no, no, I'll, next, take, I'll take your word for it. Our next podcast, no we're gonna, he's going to tell us exactly what that so is. It was, <laughs> so it was just all superstition. It's the fear of the number 13. Um, oh. And, and. And it was just superstition, but after, but once Friday the 13th, the movie came out, then it was all just every time Friday the 13th occurs, just like today, like it's just Jason. It's just like, oh, let's air a bunch of movies of Jason, let's watch 
Jason movies, you know. Oh, and for the record, if anybody asks, like this is this is like horror movie geek geekness to mm -hmm. its maximum. But if anybody asks why these movies are called Friday the Thirteenth, it's because the thirteenth of whatever month it is during this movie that this movie takes place in. I don't know if they ever say. It was June. I think June. Okay, June. Usually during the summer. Yeah. That's Jason Voorhees' birthday. Yep. Mrs. Voorhees says it. <laughs> like Mrs. Voorhees' baby son. She says it towards the end of the movie. Today is his birthday. So yeah. if anybody asks, that's the reason yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm Mrs. Mrs. I'm, uh, <laughs> was it was a wrestling reference? Yeah, I was like, Mrs. Mrs. Foley's baby boy. Mrs. Mrs. Voorhees. Mrs. Voorhees' baby boy. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> so I'll top it. so yeah. if anybody out there wants to know, that's why. Yeah. So just for the record. Alright. Alright. Oh, and well, I wanted to say we we may review the uh, NES version of Friday the 13th game and or the new Xbox Friday the 13th, so. Yeah, in more detail. Right. Yeah. Uh, just uh, look, it's, look, its own separate review. Yeah, yeah, just look forward to that and uh, continue celebrating Friday the 13th. It's, an awesome holiday. I Hell. consider it a holiday. Mm -hmm. Hell yes. That sounds weird, mm -hmm. but yeah. And and for, and for the record, before we go, and for the record, Damon is wearing a Halloween T-shirt <laughs> with <laughs> Michael Myers. Don't hold it against him. Yeah, he's yeah. A, he's, a re he's really opposing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Jason shirt. I just couldn't find it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got my I got my Jason mug, so I think I break even. Yeah, and I got my Jason. <laughs> Ball. <laughs> yeah, Jason Ball. Uh, I have, I guess I have Jason Head, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, sounds, that sounds wrong. That is, yeah, that's. I, I thought he wouldn't like that, you know? He yeah. ate a horny teenager, so why would he give you head? Uh, oh, uh, oh, head. Not um, give me head. Where's this head? Okay, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright. These, so, are, these are deleted scenes. <laughs> yeah. Uncut. No, it's uncut. Blooper. It's, blooper. it's gonna be uncut, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, so that's our review of Friday the 13th, uh, as well as just mini reviews of the video games. Uh, so we are the Three Dudes of Horror. I'm Toots. Damien. And Warm Boy. All right, and see you later. And cut.